dear Mr. Mestrelet, welcome to Chongqing. Uh, as the executive chairman of this year's Simie, do you have any special feelings about Chongqing? Yes, first of all, uh, thank you uh, very much for inviting me. Uh, it's a privilege for me to, to chair uh, this uh, 14th uh, session of the CMIA. I had also the privilege to chair the previous one, the 13th. But uh, what is also interesting for, for me, the first one, 14 years ago, and the, the second. So I have been in a position to observe the extraordinary transformation of uh, your beautiful city, Chongqing. You know, I remind that um, um, 14 years ago, Chongqing was a city which was heavily polluted. And uh, the dominant color at this time was gray. And in the meantime, uh, Chongqing was able not only to modernize the, the traditional industries, uh, it has like a, a bicycle, motorcycle engines, which are now much more much uh, profitable and competitive, and, uh, but also to create uh, besides those traditional industries, some much modern uh, activities uh, linked with, uh, with uh, IT, uh, with digital, uh, with, uh, with data. And, and so in that respect, uh, Chongqing has become a very modern uh, city by its industry, also by its finance, uh, finance uh, is a, a really an activity which has been developed here in uh, in Chongqing. And by the way, we, we, we have um, allocated one CMIA a few years ago to how to transform Chongqing into a regional financial center. And at this time, I was uh, also chairman of the uh, Paris Financial Center, and I have uh, uh, pushed for some cooperation between the Chongqing Financial Center and Paris Financial Center. And I consider that it's now uh, time to, to uh, accelerate this, uh, this uh, cooperation. And last but not least, um, the uh, Chongqing is uh, really an international transportation uh, center uh, because it is at the, at the crossroads of the uh, Belt and Road Initiative, the Yangtze River Delta, and, and uh, also the, the train, the China-Europe uh, uh, modern uh, train. Uh, so uh, Chongqing has all the capacities to, to be an international trade center and transportation hub uh, center. So that's, that's uh, really a fantastic progress made by Chongqing all over those 15 years. You are so many times visited to Chongqing. Have you fallen in love with any food or beautiful sceneries of Chongqing? Yes, of course. I, uh, I love very much uh, Chongqing, its landscape, its cooking, but also its people, its people. A matter of dynamism of the city. I love also the, uh, the landscapes. Uh, in the Sichuan region, I, I like also very much the, the spicy uh, cooking, uh, the hot spot in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Chongqing. Uh, and I consider that the, the dominant uh, color of the city, which used to be gray 15 years ago, is uh, now uh, in the surroundings of the highways and roads, dominant color is green. And, and this transformation um, makes uh, Chongqing an even uh, lovely city. Chongqing has achieved a rapid development in many areas, like the big data, like the transportation, uh, like the mainland hub, and so, uh, etc. So in your opinion, which 
uh, per perspective, or which area do you think Chongqing should be more devoted to? Chongqing is the largest municipality in the world, with more than 30 million inhabitants. So uh, Chongqing cannot and should not be focused on only one sector. And the policy all over the last years of the municipality has been to make progress in many different fields. I mentioned traditional industry, uh, uh, mentioned, you mentioned data, IT, finance, uh, transportation. And so uh, a city so big like uh, Chongqing must grow, I would say, simultaneously in all that field. Of course, its geographic location makes, for example, uh, Chongqing um, uh, a key city for, for transportation, not only a regional hub, but also an international hub uh, to, to uh, the southeast of, uh, of Asia, to, to the west, and to the, the east. So um, uh, Chongqing has some particular advantages, competitive advantages in, uh, in, in transportation to become a hub, uh, international hub, but the policy has been to progress everywhere and it has been successful. I've just discovered a few, a few figures that I would like to underline now. You know, we are in a context, international context, of, I would say, trade war, or at least trade restrictions and protectionism, uh, at the initiative of the US, by the way. And uh, the figures show that <coughs> China at large, but also Chongqing, more precisely, resist extraordinarily successfully uh, to this situation. During the first half of this year, the international trade of Chongqing has increased by 16%, 16%, in spite of the, the trade war. And its uh, um, uh, trade uh, um, uh, amount with EU has increased by 22%. And uh, the trade with ASEAN countries from Southeast Asia has increased uh, by 44%. So that's an incredible success. And frankly, those figures speak by, by themselves for the success, the economic success of Chongqing. As the executive chairman of this uh, CIMIA, uh, which good idea uh, we, or which good suggestions have you brought to Chongqing? This year, the team of the CMIA is how to, uh, not to transform, uh, to improve the position of Chongqing as an international trade and, and regional hub uh, uh, today. Uh, so many uh, Many board, uh, many members of the CMIA have proposed uh, innovations in in taking into account their own global experience. We, uh, as a uh, chairman of uh, ex chairman of uh, NG honorary chairman, uh, I proposed to uh, help Chongqing to become a green transportation hub uh, by proposing electrification of the last mile of transportation, electrification of the, the uh, uh, trucks, electrification of buses, electrification uh, of uh, waterway also. And, and so I consider that the uh, Chongqing, which has made such a, a quick and, and deep transformation to, to improve the quality of the air, uh, to improve its, uh, to green its uh, landscape, um, can also uh, become one of the world's largest uh, transportation hub, but it has to, to green this hub. You know, there are many members of CIMIA, 
uh, as the executive chairman of this year, how do you motivate and uh, ask them to propose uh, good ideas uh, to Chongqing? I consider since the very beginning that the CMIA members have uh, a double role. Uh, first, to suggest ideas, and second, to be ambassadors of Chongqing when they are back home. Uh, so, of course, the, the, the first responsibility when accepting the role of CMI member is to, to take benefit from our own experience, international experience, and to bring it on the table of the CMI. And so, uh, that's uh, that's uh, what we, we, we bring to the municipality. Uh, you know, the, the members cover various sectors of activities in the world, and they are all global companies. So when Chongqing wants, for example, to, to, to think and to innovate in a domain like uh, finance, uh, transportation, big data, uh, digital uh, industry, uh, our members can bring what they have learned from their own experience and they make a, a, a written report every year and they present a summary of this report during the, during the meeting. So that's, that's the first duty that, that uh, uh, we have. Of course, uh, in return, it's interesting for us to hear from the municipality, uh, from the mayor, uh, the vice mayors, uh, what are the priorities. And so this also um, is a, a motivation and an, an opportunity for us, international companies, to invest in Chongqing, in the relevant uh, uh, activities. We are ambassadors of uh, Chongqing, and when we love uh, Chongqing, as I do, uh, that's easy. Uh, I had for a few examples. I had occasions to, to, to come here with French journalists for them to discover Chongqing, its size, its beauty, its transformation. Um, I have another example. Uh, a few years ago, the French president of Republic French Republic, uh, Mr. François Hollande, uh, had uh, agreed with Mr. Uh, Xi Jinping to make here in China a state official visit. And uh, he had time to visit two cities in China. This means, in clear, Beijing plus another one. The question was, which one? Uh, the French Minister of Foreign Affairs suggested to our president to visit Shanghai. Um, and I uh, tried successfully to convince Mr. Hollande, our president, to visit not Shanghai, but Chongqing. And finally, he came to Chongqing. So the two cities he visited were Beijing, the capital city, and Chongqing, and it was a success, and he was pleased uh, to thank me for having suggested to him to visit your nice city. So we know, as you said, uh, members of CIMIA uh, is also acting as ambassadors of Chongqing. So I would like to know, how do you introduce Chongqing to your friends, to your business partners, etc.? Oh, well, you know, uh, it's very, very easy. Uh, very often, I present Chongqing to, by saying, uh, do you know, uh, my French uh, partner, do you know uh, what is the largest municipality in the world? And usually, they don't know that it is uh, Chongqing. And I say, Chongqing is uh, uh, one of the city not only the largest, but with the highest uh, rate of growth, 
uh, the, the deepest uh, transformation, uh, one of the richest history uh, in the one of the most beautiful landscapes uh, and uh, with one of the finest uh, 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 cuisine cooking. And so uh, I said, go to Chongqing. Uh, you will discover a fantastic city and you will be able to make business there uh, because the municipality will welcome you and will, will be able to help you, to support you in your investment and local activity. So that's, that's uh, how I present uh, Chongqing and lots of my friends decided to come here. The year 2019 uh, uh, witnesses the 70th anniversary of the foundation of the People's Republic of China. So would you like to uh, provide your blessings to our people, to our country? Of course, uh, this is a, a major event, the 70th anniversary of uh, the People's Republic of, uh, of China. Um, you know, the creation of this uh, Your Republic uh, was an historical event and the first country to recognize uh, officially your, uh, the, the People's Republic of China was France with General de Gaulle. Uh, and today, um, China plays uh, a central and essential role in the the stability and the growth of the of the world, and so uh, I would wish to the people of uh, of uh, China and its government all the best, uh, even more uh, prosperity, uh, more uh, stability, um, and what is uh, perhaps the most important role for China in the world is peace.